Hi, I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes. These books talk about every week I speak to various authors who are behind life transforming books as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog on this station this and every Saturday at 4:30 p.m. and on Sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Hello and welcome to The Writer's Blog Talk Show. This is a program designed with you and your child in mind. We are seeking to promote authors and their works as well as other stakeholders within the publishing industry. If you have written a book and you're looking for a platform to market it, this is it. Just give us a call. Number on your screen now, 0552-535-026. We are coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, the sea traditional Ghanaian, uniquely good. If you're looking for a one spot, a surreal environment, great food, here is and should be your option. Uh, numbers on your screen there, call and make reservations and make sure you're here to enjoy a great time. Now, this program, uh, like I mentioned, is partly powered by Review Multimedia Limited. And slowly, uh, they are becoming a voice for the author right here in our country. You can follow us on our website, www.thewritersblogh.com. Our Facebook and YouTube is The Writers Blog Talk Show. On Twitter and Instagram is at Writers Blog GH. You have all the details right there. The writers what we say read right indulge your mind. I am Vicky Amor and today I'm so blessed. In fact I had him on radio to discuss from his very powerful book. In fact if you're looking for any kind of breakthrough uh, you are looking at building your prayer life. This is a book you ought to read. Title is Audacious Prayers. My guest is Reverend Dr. ABK P. Whom you're back We'll dive straight into this book, Stevens. Welcome back. This is the Writer's Blog Talk Show powered by Review Multimedia Limited. Now, Review Multimedia Limited is into editorial services, uh, editing, proofreading, audio to text transcription services. Now, you are a pastor, you've written, uh, or should I say, preached a number of sermon series. You want to translate them into a book. Get in touch with the Writer's Blog team, of course, at Review Multimedia Limited. You've done some research work projects. 
uh, you've recorded it, you want to uh, transcribe it, it can be done for you as well. We do PR for all this. So after working on the books, we are able to give you the platform, um, actually launch it, and then help you promote it as well. You can check out our website on your screen now. You can always give us a call and we will sort you out. Let's get our quote for today. And I'm picking it from this all amazing book, and it's one of my favorite scriptures actually. Hebrews 4 16, and it's taken from the New Living Translation version, and it says, Emphasis added by the author. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Just one more time. It says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. This book summarizes this particular scripture. And I'm blessed, like I mentioned earlier, to have Reverend Dr. Albert B.K. appear. Now he earned a Master of Divinity degree and a Doctor of Ministry degree. He is the lead pastor of Renewal Christian Center in Upper Melbourne, Maryland, which he planted with his wife, Angela. And his wife comes in prominently, almost every single page. <laughs> he is gifted and an astute teacher at the teacher of God's word. Appears compassion for people is demonstrated through his concern for their well-being and spiritual goods. He resides in Maryland with his wife and their twin. Sure. Welcome to the writer's book. Thank Should you. Should I say welcome again? <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, yes. But how are you doing? I'm doing well. It's been a bit busy, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah yes. it's been good. But I, like I always say, I'm always finding out from authors how long it takes them to write, and then of course the inspiration behind this one. Now, everybody knows prize important uh, for the Christian, but why audacious? Audacious was, um, you know, uh, looking through the scriptures, I came across so many audacious ways that were uttered, uh, mm -hmm. you know, unto God, and God answered. Um, the word audacious simply means bold, it means dare, it mm -hmm. means fearless. And so, audacious prayer simply means you offer bold, fear, fearless prayers to God. Mm -hmm. And um, I came to a point in time in my own life when I knew. I had to offer a bold prayer for God to answer, uh, to take me out of that situation, or rather to see me through that situation. And um, do you want me to go ahead and tell the story? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. So, um, we've been married for 38 years now. I might not look it, but yeah, yeah. You know, for 38 years. <laughs> and um, two years into our marriage, so this was 36 years ago, uh, my wife uh, was ill, she went to a doctor. And uh, she was diagnosed with an incurable disease. And so she came home and uh, told me the story and behind it. I mean, that this is what the doctor said after they had uh, done all the uh, research and whatever they had done, the tests and all that. And so she said, um, uh, I know I've been with you for a long time. And I always joke with her because at the time uh, we were thinking of changing her car. Uh, because I said, your car is all one of you, just you know, get a new car. And she said, oh, no, I'm fine. And that day when she came from, from the doctor's message, she said, honey, I want that new car. You know, because my, my life <laughs> because is my time is short. My time is up. <laughs> you know, so um, I said to her, and really, uh, the other thing behind that also is that she had actually lost uh, a sister to the same disease. So it was really quite uh, a serious situation. Yeah. And this one, she lost another sister also. And so, because of the history behind it, I knew it wasn't a situation that needed to be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, honey, we're going to fight this together. And so I went before the Lord and I offered a prayer. And I said, Lord, I want her to defy the world. Mm -hmm. I want my wife to see the children she mm -hmm. So that was 36 years ago. And God did hear that prayer. And so it's been quite an interesting journey, but God answered. And then also different kinds of situations, and, and I talk about all those in the book, yeah. where we offer a good prayer to God, and God answered. Yeah. So this book is about 30 
of 23 chapters, yeah, uh, 273 pages. And the concept for the cover actually also intrigues me. They have uh, Gargantuan Mountain, yes. uh, should I say that? Yeah. Very huge one. And you see uh, people walking towards that mountain. What was the inspiration behind the cover? So the inspiration behind it, and, and I should take credit to you know my the design, uh, the design yeah. you know, Ivy. Uh, she's actually a member of our church, and so. And was uh, that by a female? Yes, oh. yes. You know, and uh, she does most of the designing uh, for me in the church, and so uh, I gave her the you know title of the book and all that, and uh, she came up with it. Uh, the concept is that of a mountain, a huge mountain, as mm -hmm. I said. And if you look closely, you realize that there are people walking, yeah. you know, and the idea is they're going to climb the mountain. And so it's just depicting the fact that there's no prayer that is too huge for God to answer. Mm -hmm. There's no situation that you cannot point mm -hmm. Just take the step of faith and you get over. I'm here with Reverend Dr. ABK Apia. We're discussing from his book, Audacious Prayers. And here is the subtitle, Making Bold with Us. Expecting answers, and um, let's start off from the very beginning. And um, what is prayer? Uh, you know, that it's interesting when I'm asked that question. Uh, and my simple answer is prayer is simply communicating with God, you know, talking to God, just like we're talking. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a father, and then uh, expecting him to hear back from God. Yeah. And so that, that's the simplest definition of prayer as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm saying, but how important is it? Speaking? Yeah. Well, prayer is extremely important. Uh, so important that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself taught us how to pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the Bible says in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 17, pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. And so it means that prayer should be a part of the life of a Christian. Uh, you and I know, as Scripture says, that uh, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and so on. We do have an adversary whose goal is to steal, to kill, to destroy. And prayer is one of those weapons that God has given us uh, to ensure that we overcome every attack of the evil one mm -hmm. and also to have the strength and the grace and all that we need yeah. to be able to do what God has called us to do. So you look at the life of uh, some of the great men of God, they are men of prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul was a man of prayer. Yeah. Jesus himself said the example, praying all kinds of prayers morning, night, sometimes praying all night long. Yeah. And so prayer should be a very important part of the life of every Christian. Now, um, you shared um, about your life. Actually, I didn't tell you this, but this is like a mixture of love, yeah. <laughs> his personal mind, which is like an autobiography, and then his faith. Um, and so, um, and, and I know a, a caption or one or two captions, in fact, almost all, captions, testimonials written in here, spells it out, how you are able to infuse your life and of course living out the fit life when it comes to prayer and seeing the results once you go to God movie to make those requests. But from the very beginning about your life growing up, you shared how your mom was a woman of faith, building an altar of prayer. Even though your dad was not so much of a Christian, your mom kept you on going. Could that be the genesis for your faith? It, it is definitely a part of it. Okay. Um, mom, well, there are 10 of us kids, and that's a lot of children. That's a lot. <laughs> so I, I think she knew it for us and had no 10 children. Uh, but watching her you know, pray, and I believe, as I mentioned in the book, that I believe her prayer I covered mm -hmm. us you know, uh, as children. Mm -hmm. My father, came to know the Lord much later in life after they had retired. But that was definitely a part of uh, mm -hmm. my spiritual formation. Even though I didn't give my life to Christ in terms of a personal relationship mm -hmm. onto after college in London. Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, prayers are important. You know, you pray in it works. And so I believe Mount's prayer definitely uh, well from the special before I put you advice. But it's interesting how uh, a man like you who just went to church, I mean, it was just like a normal routine for you until you encountered God for yourself. I remember in some portions you would argue out <laughs> yeah. with pastors yeah. and regarding sermons and things yeah. they have preached. Yeah. How did you become one again? 
so, so that's an interesting story. Um, my roommate at the university, uh, this was uh, in the long way London. Uh, he came from town one day and he said, you know, I, I, I met a Sunday school friend of mine uh, you know, uh, in town. And so I wanted to go and visit them. So we went to uh, visit the family, and uh, one of them, we were two sisters, you know, and uh, one of them you know, invited us to church. And so uh, I went with my friend to where she went to church, uh, and then the following week uh, my friend didn't go, but I continued to go with her. Okay. And then this, this uh, lady became, well, this young girl at the time, <laughs> became a friend. Okay. You know, so, uh, you know, we, we would go to church every Sunday, I'd get on the train, she lived in a different part of London, and so i got on the train and then ride and then we see at the train station and we go to church and come back together. And so I kept going, and I was a Christian, I would listen to the sermon as I was writing the book, uh, I would even take notes, copy of it. And then after the, mm -hmm. the service, I would ask the pastor a number of questions, you know. And so I kept arguing about the things she would say. It didn't seem to make sense to me. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. you know, I was wondering why these people would de dedicate their lives to this. But one day, uh, as an evening service, and uh, the, 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 uh, well, later on, the lady, the girl who introduced me to church, became my wife after yeah. five years of friendship. Yeah. Uh, but I was in service one day, uh, an evening service, and I just felt the property. It was actually a prayer meeting. You know, so I felt the point to start to give a life to Christ. And so I got up, everybody was just praying, and uh, I got up and tapped the pass of his shoulders, and I said, I want to give a life to Christ. And of course, uh, you know, unknown to me, the church had been quietly praying for this young man to give his life to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I was baptized, uh, that was a Friday, I was baptized on Sunday, and I'm never going to pass it. Yeah, you Yes, and, and let me just add this that mm -hmm. I've never owned the Bible. Uh, and so, uh, when I gave my life to Christ, uh, the young lady then bought me a Bible. <laughs> yes, Angie. Yes, Angie. <laughs> Angie bought me a Bible. And then I, I read it, I, I mean, I devoured it, you know, from cover to cover. I was just hungry. So many times, yes, actually. Yes, I read it. Uh, and then after I finished reading it, I came to the front table of the Bible and wrote, Life without God is a hopeless existence. Because yeah. I knew and experienced it for myself. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's how I became one of you. And guess what? He's been at it, um, working hard, building um, his own ministry as well. Yes. Um, and I see from the various pages in the book how uh, you raised yourself together with your wife, um, all the leadership rules you had in your previous church. Yeah the issues that came yes. up. I mean, that is that if you're a pastor, there are specific chapters in this meet, um, or a church leader, uh, because it will help you. There are nuggets that will keep you going. And, and then eventually you come into, um, you know, form, or as it were, start with you or Christian center. Um, if you can just give us a little bit about that story. And then when we come back from the, the second book, we'll be talking about um, the various issues you must work with and how uh, certainly. Uh, well, from, I've been in that particular church uh, for 17 years, mm -hmm. and uh, my wife and I actually were the first couple to be married in the church. And so we, she, well, she was in the church when I joined. Okay, joined. Yes. And so uh, we got married in the church, and uh, we stayed in the church uh, you know, for 17 years until. We actually uh, left. Uh, but uh, when the Lord called, then I, I, you know, I, I was uh, very active in the ministry, as you mentioned, doing yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. And so when the Lord called me, uh, I went out of stage for three years uh, to study you know, for ministry. And then when I came back, but before I left you know, the seminar, my uh, pastor asked if I would come to be his associate. And I said yes. And, uh, but at that point in time, the Lord has spoken to me about planting the church. So I explained to him, I said, but when the time comes, we do release me. And uh, we have a, a tremendous relationship. And, uh, so I came and sat him for three years. When the time came, I asked him permission. And uh, it was tough to let me go, very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. But I tell the story in the book that, uh, that my pastor knew for a whole year mm -hmm. uh, that I was going to leave. Yeah. No one else knew. I stayed with him. 
that we work to you know, carve out a path of transition and things yeah. of that sort. And then we left the bishop. So it wasn't easy, but I knew the time has come, had come, and so we were able to leave. But the challenges uh, in the ministry when we joined, and you know, when you read the book, uh, you will get the sense of what I'm yeah. saying. So yeah. Maybe it is by the book and maybe, yes, but should. definitely, uh, you know, many challenges, uh, but we helped to uh, work our way through mm -hmm. the passion. When the time came, he, he did with it. He did with it, yeah. yeah. And, and that uh, brings me to this particular point, just before we go for the point, yeah. because I've seen how uh, many Christians struggle to leave churches. Um, it's like probably the Lord is telling you to go. And there are some churches they say you are not supposed to leave this church. Um, and so then it becomes a struggle. And at the end of the day, you leave, and there are so many issues with it. I see in this book how he practically gives us a guide to living peacefully. But I just want you to share with us um, how practicable that is. Because there are some men of God or some church leaders who just will not understand why you ought to go. Sometimes they even ask if you are actually heard from God, because to them, you are supposed to be with them forever. Yeah, you know, um, God is the one who calls, and He's the one who does. You know, the Bible says that uh, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, as a pastor, personally, I've always believed that um, God's children are there for me to share. I will own them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm simply a shepherd of their souls. Yeah. Uh, and the one who owns them is really the Lord Himself. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, my thing is that. Um, if, if you know God has put it on your heart, you know, to, to, to serve in a place uh, for a while, serve wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. When you hear from God that it's time to leave, uh, you know, for whatever reason God gives you, uh, it's important to share that with your pastor, you know, in a fun way, very respectful way. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, and prayerfully also, I believe that uh, if you prayerfully approach your pastor, about the need to leave, uh, even if he doesn't seem to understand or want to begin, uh, if, if, if God has really spoken, I believe with all my heart that even if it takes that, uh, he will let you go. You know, but be very, you know, be, very careful to be respectful. You know, don't be arrogant. You know, I think when you say to me, oh, I've heard from God, I don't care what you say. <laughs> you know, no, you have to care. Me. And also, you know, it's important to realize that God speaks to all of us. And so maybe he hasn't taken time, me, your mm -hmm. pastor, mm -hmm. hasn't taken time to hear from yeah. God. Yeah. You know, so pray that God will touch his heart. Because God is a prayer answering God. And because he is the owner of that same day that you've mm -hmm. been working in, mm -hmm. I have no doubt that uh, there's a way to go about it in a way that will be honored to God. It's so respectful. It's awesome. It's awesome. Let me just read a caption before we go for our break. Uh, page 38. It says, the God we serve in one church is the same God we will meet in another church, unless we really do not know him. <laughs> it is true that there are times when God would release a person from one church to another. It is also true that one should leave when it is evident that the word of God is not being preached, that there is blatant immorality, or that Jesus is no longer the focus of the church. They are all real and legitimate reasons to leave a church. But the truth is, some people leave churches because of personal issues that they justify with skewed theological reasoning. And I see quite a lot of that. Oh, and this person did yes. me. And this person does speak well to me. And so that's why I'm leaving. And he says that I am of the opinion that as much as possible, one must always leave a church in such a way as to be able to return to visit or worship in good conscience. And his, his pastor, his former pastor, was so invited to church. Exactly, even after his Even after his So let's do it. And that's what I'm saying, there's a book you must get. We're going for a very quick break. When we are back, we're still diving into this book, audacious prayers, making bold requests, and expecting us to see us. The 
There are many who have gone to their graves with untold stories. Stories meant to change and transform lives. Don't let that happen to you. If a story isn't you, it has to come out. It must be told. Do you have an idea or a life transforming story to share? Do you want to write a book but don't know how? Let the expert writers at Review Multimedia help you out. Are you a preacher with a desire to convert your sermons into books and other readable materials? Review Multimedia offers efficient and on time audio to text transcription services at a very affordable price. We also transcribe interviews, documentaries, etc. We offer other tutorial services such as editing and proofreading. That's not all. At Review, the author and his or her book are our priority. We are the brain behind the writer's blog, a book review program which airs on Sunny FM and Sunny TV, meant to celebrate authors and their works, as well as promote other stakeholders in the publishing industry. We offer PR services for authors with top-notch publicists who create thrilling stories, book reviews and commentaries, organize book launches and related events to provide mileage on all meaningful media platforms for the author and their works. Call on us today to help bring every creative idea to life. For more information, call, text or send a WhatsApp message to 0552 535 036 or 0208 428 Send us an email reviewmultimediagh at gmail.com Facebook, Instagram and YouTube at Review Multimedia GH. Our website is www.revealmultimediagh.com Review Multimedia Dreams Come Alive Welcome back. You're still watching the Writer's Blog Talk Show right here on this channel. We're coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. And I just want to share with you uh, some of the things happening right here at um, La Palm. Now, they have Sunday buffet. You know how you can, you know, close from church and you're so tired and you're not sure what to do, what you're thinking of what to cook and all that. Come with your family, the entire family house on brunch, right here every Sunday, 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. It's always Sabbath like and in village restaurant. Um, kids below five years can eat for free, and that's very exciting. Half price for children between six and 12 years. Rate is only 320 uh, Ghana cities. That's 320 Ghana cities on your screen now. They also have the Oriental Night Buffet Dinner, 280 per head, music from the in-house pianist. And you love this one. Just a relaxing evening for you. 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. at the Continental Restaurant. So much to enjoy right here at your park. Call now, number on your screen, make reservations and make sure you are here. Now, as part of plans to uh, promote reading, and the reading and writing culture back in our society. We are starting with the younger ones. And so we have the TWB Book Club. We meet the last Saturday of every month right here at La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. If you want to register your child, uh, if they are between 5 and 15 years, then please go ahead and do so. Send the word Book Club or just call 0552 535 036. We say TWB Book Club, everything writing, everyone. Read. We are still here with Reverend Dr. Um, ABK up here. I love his name also. <laughs> and we're discussing from his book, Audacious Prayers, Making Bold Requests, Expecting Answers. And this is my own personal review. If you are looking for healing, you need to read chapters 10, 12, 14, and 16. If you are, uh, you know, trying so hard to build faith, declare and see come to pass, you ought to reach out to 20. Um, and that will help you to stand firm because some of the things that Reverend has gone through, not just him, but his wife, his, his everything around him, I mean, it's a living testimony. That's what it is. Uh, if you're also looking um, for a child, read chapter seven, because there you find out how God came through for this particular call. And like I said, if you're a church leader, Head pastor, you're a Christian, you want to be a better Christian. We taught us five and eight. But more importantly, Reverend, in, in, in this book, you talk about how important suffering is for this Christian work. And that um, will be, I think, chapter 13. And the title is Can God Trust You? 
about suffering? Talk to us about suffering and the Christian work. Yeah, so, so that particular uh, chapter came out of an experience I had uh, when my, my wife had gone through uh, her surgery. And so I've been fasting and praying, you know, raising uh, for the procedure to, to be over. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the chapel of the hospital and I was just praying and waiting. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, it's time, uh, it's okay, just uh, if you go, get something to eat. So I went to the restaurant, the uh, cafeteria, you know, to, um, uh, to have some soup, break my fast and have some soup. And then at that point, uh, the doctor called me right then and said, everything is fine, it's, it's all successful. And as I sat reflecting, a question came to me, and I knew it wasn't just a question, but mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit speaking to me, uh, can God trust you with suffering? And so I, I just reflected over it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, uh, every person who has been uh, really used by God went through challenges and suffering. Yeah. I mean, look at Joseph, you know, the story, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the portion of him being sold into slavery by the siblings, yeah. and, you know, all those kinds of things. But in the end, God came to him. Uh, you look at Paul, and Paul was called by God. Uh, uh, Jesus said to him, and I'm going to show this man how much he must suffer for my kingdom, my, mm -hmm. you know, my sin. On and on and on. Uh, you know, you look at Jesus himself, mm -hmm. the challenge is the suffering. In fact, peace of my mind says that um, to this we call that Christ suffered, setting an example mm -hmm. for us to nice. follow. You know. And so we, we must understand. And I also, also uh, you know, want to remind the people that you know, life is very more in the valley than at the mountain top. Yes, we have mountain top experiences, but we have a lot of challenges. Yeah. And Jesus himself says that in this world we'll have tribulation. Yeah. It should be of good cheer. You know, James yeah. says that mm -hmm. we can't with all joy when we go through traps because the testing of our, you know, our faith is involved yeah. you know, when we go through traps. So uh, it's something that we have to see as part of life. You know? and, and because there's so much suffering in the world, uh, if God is going to use you to minister to others, you must be able to identify with what they're going through. You know, so suffering is not a useless thing. Yeah. You know, it's challenging, it's difficult, mm -hmm. but it helps to mold our character, strengthen us, and become vessels that God can use to be a blessing to others uh, who are going through challenges. Most of us as Christians, you know, young Christians coming up at the time, we always felt that we ought to sail smoothly. It has to be all rosy. Once I'm born again and in Christ, everything must be good. But it doesn't. And just like you mentioned, it's so that we can have a testimony yes. and be able to relate with the people we are ministering to. Uh, reading from page 120, it says, God uses trials and different kinds of suffering to prepare our lives for what he desires to accomplish through us. Suffering, when we know we are walking with God to the best of our abilities, is never a wasted thing. It is part of the curriculum in God's school of divinity. And that one just yeah. gets me. It says, God always wins, so be patient, trusting as you journey with Him into your divinely appointed destiny. Press on and battle through your trials. God will see you through the journey. Hold on to the word of God and never give up, no matter what. Purpose in your heart that you will persevere through your situation because God is faithful and He will not disappoint you. It is very, very important. Now, if you can share, and apart from your, I know apart from, um, I'm yet to meet here, I can say anti Angie's, yes. you know, uh, manage health issues, you have also had your own battles. Yes. If you can share one with us and how prayer came through for you. So actually, uh, I, I returned from Ghana, you know, back to the city. I come to bury my mom, and you know, when I went back uh, to the city, uh, I realized that I was having some severe back pain. You know, I wasn't sure what it was. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, I decided to go and see you know, the doctor. Uh, and and I, I remember this so uh, My primary physician you know, uh, looked at me, asked a few questions, and said, oh, um, you know, I don't think it's anything mm -hmm. serious, but mm -hmm. she asked me an interesting question. Uh, she said, do you drive an SUV? And I said, yeah. yeah. 
And this is said, oh, maybe you strain yourself and get me to the top. Very interesting. Uh, but it persisted. And so I went back and uh, she wanted to do you know, some um, x-rays and all those kinds of things. And uh, interestingly, uh, I had gone to Germany to go and minister for about a week or so, a little over a weekend. You know, I came back. Uh, whilst out in, in Germany, the pain became very severe. And so when I came back, I went straight to her and I said, no, I think we need to do a little bit more. And so to make a long story short, you know, she went and I had all those x-rays and all those kinds of things done. Uh, and then she called me back into the office and said, you know, you know this is very serious. You have a tumor, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's cancerous, uh, but it needs to be attended to right now. And so that was uh, a bit of a shock, sure, you know, yeah. because I've been very, very healthy okay. and no issues at all. Mm -hmm. And so I was directed to go and see an oncologist and uh, all those kinds of things. Uh, to, to this kind of, uh, you know, all short, uh, the oncologist, uh, you know, had called me into his office uh, after the final results and he said uh, the x-rays and all the images are showing that you have a slid out bone in your neck. In other words, uh, it's called muscle myeloma and that attacks your bones in different parts of your body, you know. And so he said to me very clearly, he said, the bone in your neck is almost gone. And so I'm going to have to schedule it for seven years immediately. This was a Friday. This is definitely, that was my birthday. And so I had very bad because it's not my birthday. Yeah. And then he said, uh, we're going to have to put you in surgery on Monday. And then she, he said something interesting. As you go, be careful not to drive through a portal. Because if you drive through a portal mm -hmm. uh, and you are checked, you could break the bone and you'd be paralyzed on your leg down. And then he said, when you go home, be sure not to lift up more than half a gallon of milk because any undue pressure can break the bone. Mm -hmm. So just in other words, you know, treat yourself very carefully and then come back on Monday. And so that was really challenging. Yeah. And I went before the Lord uh, in prayer. And, and I remember the word of God back to me. Uh, you will not die, but live to declare my words. I prayed boldly to the Lord and I said, that was 12 years ago. I said, Lord, that children are young and there's so much to do. Uh, and, and I remember one thing my wife said to me, uh, she said, honey, we're going to battle this together. I remember you have young children and you know, you're going nowhere. And I said to her, honey, don't worry, I'm going to write all the books I need to write. You know, make sure you have a million dollars in the bank before I leave me. That's different. But seriously, mm -hmm. I had to pray and stand upon the word of God that I wasn't going to die, but live to be prepared to myself. But that was so basic. Mm -hmm. And so God is faithful. Uh, and so, yes, God does answer prayer. It's amazing. And one of the things that you will discover once you get a copy of this book is how you can actually practicalize what you're talking about. It is so clear, it is so simple. Chapter one is the genesis of it all. Uh, chapter two, trusting God in seminary. Those ones, those ones. Called to serve, time to leave and plant. Audacious prayers of faith, planting the new Christian center. This one is what I said. Every man God must have, you know, this one. Uh, prayer is, is Silly yeah. Can't do without. Can't do yes. without. Audacious prayers um, to be blessed with children. Audacious prayers we need to build. Audacious prayers, oh Lord, page your church. Audacious prayers, Lord, heal my wife. A husband's reflections. This one is a beautiful chapter. Mm -hmm. Reflections from a healed woman, Angie's continued story. Chapter 13 is what we spoke about. Can God trust you? with suffering the marks on my body is to the 14 15 is lessons learned uh 16 is oh lord not again to the 17 the need for prayer uh, the prayer life of jesus jesus wants us to pray audaciously is chapter 19. to the 20 is some audacious prayers in the bible 21 is some personal audacious prayers and this one he talks about his life and those very important places where um, God came through after he made those books. And um, chapter 22 is the keys to effective prayers. And this is something um, I would like us to touch on 
add briefly, and this is 225, if you indulge me. Remember, you are watching the writer's blog talk show, and here I am looking for it again. 225, 225. I'm almost there, stay with me, I'm almost there. Okay, uh, because I, I think that is one of the things that uh, you need to know. 225, some personal prayers. Six keys to effective prayer. Um, if you don't mind, I want to share. Sure. Okay. A clean heart is one of them. I've actually marked it, so here I am looking for it. A clean heart, and I'm wondering why this is so. Why must you have a clean heart before you can have answers to your prayers, so or you can be effective in your prayer life? So, so the Bible says that uh, the prayers of a righteous man, a woman, for that matter, are powerful and mm -hmm. And so, if, if you Prayers are to be powerful, to be effective. Uh, that word effective means energy. So if your prayers are to have energy, mm -hmm. then God is saying you have to be right before you. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember what the psalmist says, if I regard it and you put it in my heart, God will not have heard you. Know? So it's really important that uh, we, we confess ourselves, we make sure that uh, we, we, we ask God to cleanse us. Mm -hmm. So we go before that holy God. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Key two, pray in the name of Jesus. Um, that's what the Bible says and instructs us to do. Key three, pray according to God's will. I've heard so many times people talk, um, or even men of God, or even preachers share about praying according to God's will so that we don't pray amiss. Um, so I was just pick the scripture and yeah. just play around it. And that's why I'm asking you to get a copy of this book. It will help you practicalize this for real. Um, key four is pray with passion, persistence, and perseverance. And you see it all through out of this book. Pray in faith, for without it we cannot please mm -hmm. God. Number six, pray with thanksgiving. And that is sometimes very hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when things are difficult. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 You have to be grateful. You yeah. remember uh, when Jesus was faced with uh, 5,000 people to feed and mm -hmm. two loaves of bread. Mm -hmm. Five, five uh, loaves of bread and two fish. Mm -hmm. What did he do? Mm -hmm. He prayed mm -hmm. unto the Father, find the Lord, because he knew God that would be provided. So pray with us today. This is a very, very powerful book. And I know I love books. I think this is really one of my favorites. Um, because we are in times where you are not certain what to do, where to go, especially when you find yourself in a particular situation. People are resorting to all forms of things. Um, occultism, yes. fetishism, all of that. But there is power in prayer. And that is what this book will help you appreciate and also help you and guide you step by step. Where do we get copies and how much is this going for? Okay, so um, it's on Amazon, first of all, okay, <laughs> internationally, if you are inclined to uh, do that. Uh, Amazon, uh, it's 22 dollars on Amazon, okay. uh, which is in Ghana, about 240 cities. Yeah. Okay, but uh, we're giving a special prize in Ghana. Uh, you can get it at Challenge Book Shop uh, for 120 cities, mm -hmm. uh, which is about half okay. price. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, on your channel as well. Yes. Uh, they can get it wonderful, wonderful. So, if you want a copy of this book, just uh, give us a call 0552. Actually, number on your screen now 53506. 0552 We're going for TWB Nuggets. When we are back, we'll uh, ask Reverend to share a few things with you. His final words. And then probably say a prayer for anybody who's believing God before a breakthrough statements. This is TWB Nugget. Hello and welcome to TWB Nugget. We have begun a new series on commonly mispronounced words. It is easy to mispronounce words in English for several reasons. One of these reasons is that English language is full of silent words. That means that while the letter appears in the word, it isn't pronounced when spoken aloud. Our commonly mispronounced word for today is cupboard. Well, 
it is actually pronounced as cupboard, even though it's spelled C U P B O A R D, which means a board or a table for cups and other things like plates and bowls. The P is silent. So you say cupboard, cupboard. Yes, there is a board at the end, but the board is pronounced as a bird. So it is cupboard instead of cupboard. So for example, instead of you saying Kojo puts the cup in the cupboard, you should rather say Kojo puts the cup in the cupboard. And that is our tip for today. Tune in next week for yet another great key tip. My name is Bob Okran, and as I always say, bye for now. Good news for everyone. The Writer's Block Talk Show is now on podcast. Listen to engaging book discussions and reviews. Discover authors behind amazing books. Find the right book to read. Listen now on your preferred podcast platform. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Pocket Cast, Overcast, and Google Podcasts. Follow the Writer's Blog on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Writer's Blog GH. On YouTube, the Writer's Blog Talk Show. Send us an email at thewritersblockgh at gmail.com or give us a call on 552 535 036 or 0208-428-322. The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. And there you have it. Beautiful tip there. I hope you, you take note of that and practice it. Remember, we are here with Reverend Dr. ABK Apia discussing from his book, Audacious Prayers. We are rounding up in a bit, but did you know the writer's blog is now on podcast? Yes, we are on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Apple Pocket Cast, Overcast, Google Podcasts. In fact, earlier this year, we were ranked number 10 for literature, our audio literature. And so, what are doing about it? So, just go check us out, subscribe, and you will enjoy more. Of these, and of course, you have all the profile in book reviews, thematic discussions, and nuggets for readers, writers, and book lovers. Go on there and check us out. Remember, we are coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Reservations open, uh, come have a great time. You can come with your children as well. Nice swimming pool all over the place. Next time you get here, can I swim? Can I swim? It's such a beautiful environment, and so. Make your reservations and come in here. So, Reverend, rounding up the map, remember if you want a copy, you can always get it at an age bookshop. It's also online, ebooks, paperback, everything available online as well. Uh, but you can also give us a call number on the screen and we will get it to you. Finally, what would you have to say to um, our followers and viewers watching us now regarding prayer or any aspect of your life? Thanks, Abel. And, and of course, scripture predicts that the end times will be very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, it's a time to pray. So, no matter how challenging uh, your circumstances will be, uh, trust that because God is a prayer and pray God, uh, call upon you. But some 50 and 50 says, uh, call upon me, you'll be in trouble. I will hear you and you honor me. Mm -hmm. And so, so, God is good you know, to help us in the situations. He's made a promise that. Uh, if you go through the fire, you will not be burned. If you go through the water, mm -hmm. you will not be drowned. Mm -hmm. And so, call upon him, uh, whatever situation you face, and believe and trust that because it's a prayer answer you will know, help you. And so, don't give up. Yeah. No matter how telling you the situation might be, I've shared many stories about mm -hmm. very difficult things I had to face, but how God came through. And so, God will come through for you. you never give up. Mm -hmm. He's more than willing to help and see you through. So there you have it, but please say a prayer for us as, as we are. Certainly. Okay. Father, I, I want to thank you for this privilege and this opportunity. Well, I'm asking that uh, because you are a prayer answering God, and because the Bible tells us that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you answered prayers in the past, in Scripture, in my own life, and the lives of many of your children, Lord, do the same for your children. And so I lift up uh, your children before you, those who are listening. And you know the challenges, you know the difficulties. 
some are going through challenges uh, at home in their marriages, some are going through financial difficulties, some are going through uh, low, uh, health issues and crisis and all kinds of things. But you are a prayer answering God. The word says we should not be anxious about anything, but in all things by prayer and supplication. The thanksgiving we should make our prayers known to you, and that your peace will pass us all on the sun will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. The word also says we should ask and it will be given to us. We should seek and we'll find. We should knock and the door shall be open. So Lord, I just stand in the gap for the children uh, today. I'm asking that you come through. Father, wash over them. Protect them from the evil one and supply their every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Lord, I'm also asking that your peace will pass us all on the sun. Lord, we overshadow your children and bring them through their situations. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend, uh, for passing through. Uh, someday when we travel and we come, we'll come in with you. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and, uh, and see what God is doing with you. He is a man of faith and he can help but you know, have that strong energy anytime he's around. If you believe that prayer, it will happen for you. But more importantly, get a copy of this. Uh, online, available as well, and physically, if you want a hard copy, uh, please give us a call on the screen and we will deliver to. Remember, this year, a crowd world will come to us as named as by you as well. It's exciting to know that we have been named uh, as, you know, a crowd world book capital. And so we are doing our best to help in pulpit reading and writing amongst children. So, when you say your children? that be part of this particular event. Uh, we're going to have audio listening sessions, writing sessions, arts and crafts, uh, so much to play and eat and drink. We take some pictures and share the pictures. We have to call and the registration and write away. 0552 535 Once again, thank you for being part of this program. We are back next week, same time, with another exciting one. The writer's book, Read, Write, Indulge Your Mind. Hi, I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading, but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes these books talk about. Every week, I speak to various authors who are behind life-transforming books, as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog. On this station, this and every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. and on sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Thank you for watching The Writer's Blog on this channel. If you want to sponsor, partner, advertise or have your book reviewed on the show, Call or send a text or WhatsApp message to or send an email to follow us on social media. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia. Join us next week for another exciting edition. The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind.